The jump. Oh, man, the jump. When I first went in, the fear, the vastness, the darkness, the canopy overhead. I'd be standing on the trail loading up my pack and my weapon struggling into 50 pounds of gear and trying to jam my weapon on my back. And I'd get loaded up, put my helmet on, and I'd take a step and I'd be in the sunlight. And I'd take another step and the blackness would eat me. I didn't want to follow my mind down the trail out there into the darkness. And the rain, the rain which finds its way into everything. And you can sit on your poncho and you can pull it tight around you like it was your girlfriend. Hold it tight and that rain will find a way into your ears and mouth and nose and into your boots and into your weapon. And we, we climb endlessly in the hills, endlessly, looking for Charlie. Me and Blake and Billy Brooks and Raymond, Randy, Swan, White. You stick your hand down the trail, you pull this man up to you. You pull your hand up and that man pulls you up to him. And like a human rope, we go up the mountain that way, always towards the sky, pulling each other up towards the sky. And we set an ambush. We set an ambush at sunset and we sit in the jungle and we wait and we wait and we wait. And at night, we set the trip wires around us. We sleep inside with our heads touching so we know we're there. We never sleep because of the noise of the jungle and the fear. Only the crazy have no fear, I'm telling you. Only the crazy and white is crazy. He lives among us, but he's not really one of us. He's put something over his soul. But it doesn't matter out here in the bush. It doesn't matter what you did before or who you were. Out here, we're all brothers. And we cling to each other out here like lost men in a raft at sea. I was dreaming. I was dreaming. I was lost and caught in the jungle, and the jungle was clutching at me and pulling and twisting and pulling me down into her like a woman, into the fecund moss, into the black mud. And I was twisting and trying to get free, and I could feel the jungle pulling me down and pulling me down and far off down by the river from the south. We hear the choppers coming to get me. Listen to the choppers tom tom thump of the chopper blades coming to get me and i was praying sister of death sister of mercy black sister of death black sister of mercy lift me up out of here take me out of the shit and out of the betrayal and i could feel the great curved metal side of the chopper and i could see the red running lights in the ring and i could hear the chopper blades singing holy 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 lift me up out of the ship take me out of here and then i was free and lifting away in the jungle and a woman falling away and i was free and i could hear the thump 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 of the raindrops on my poncho taking me away and i was back bush. I was awake and I was in the bush. And I was watching the jungle and then I was drinking a cup of the tea the girls gave me. I was watching the tea leaves floating and forming at the bottom of the cup. And I asked myself, I said, if the angel of death and the angel of mercy are one and the same thing, there is no more questions to be answered out here. I was in the shit. I was going to have to find my own way out of it. I was so happy my tour of duty was over. And we drove down to the chopper field. I caught a flight to Saigon. And suddenly I was home. My friends were dead, Johnson and Brownie. And I was walking up the driveway to my father's house. 
I was two people then. I was one person looking forward, and I was one person looking backwards. And then I saw the love in my father's eyes when he threw the door open, and my duffel bag hit the door away, and I walked into the house, and the neighborhood looked just the same, achingly the same. That long, hot street was quiet and gold, just like all the summer's past. I could hear the kids in the swimming pool, and at the ballpark playing baseball. Just when I thought I was that kid that same kid belonged to in the neighborhood. It's when the ghost of the dead came along the back fence. And they stood alongside me in the front yard. I slowly made enemies out of all those neighbors. We're killing them, aren't we? They gotta kill them all, don't we? I mean, we're winning this war, aren't we? I was under the shower and the hot water long gone cold and I was dreaming, I was dreaming, I was in the river of the dead with Johnson and Brownie and I was in the river of the dead and I would never come out. And when the monsoons came, they washed away the bricks Papa saw and put in front of the bar and the water got too swift and deep, and then nobody came. And then Mama saw Papa saw I was sitting at the bar alone late at night, smoking cigars late at night alone in the bar. And I would never come out. And then after a long time, my parents would come. They turned the shower off, and I get up and I walk outside, and my footprints staining the hardwood floors, and I went in the backyard. And my mom and dad were standing looking at me under the oak tree, the ping pong table, staring at me. They wanted me to be the same as I was before, but I never could be. I'd seen too much. They were staring at me. I wanted to reach out to my mom and dad, but I did pull them to me. I couldn't do it. And one day, Walking down the hall, my mom grabbed me and she said, you're pale, Jamie. You look like you're dying. And I knew I had to get out of there. And so one fall day, I took everything I owned, I stuck it in a paper bag. And I walked out of that neighborhood, fall day, and the leaves turned to rust and gold, and the tree limbs over my head, like fingers touching. I walked out of that street, a childhood street, a long street. I hear the kids watching TV and laughing. Got down the end of the street, went to the freeway. Went down to the freeway, headed south. And when I got down there, I looked back up in my neighborhood, and it was like that kid I was was never there. It never existed. I was gone. 